outside today it is an absolute scorcher here in New Zealand so I've decided to stay in the cool of my office and do a landscape photo edit and share it with you guys. So in this video I'm going to work on this photograph taken in the South Island here in New Zealand and I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to come along with me as I work through Luminar AI, go through all the editing options that are there and my thought process as to what I'm including in my edit, what I'm not and the changes that I'm making and why. I've got my photo in front of me, I've got my nice cup of coffee and I'm ready to get editing. Before I start any edit, one of the most important things for me is to have a general idea of where I want to take a photo. If you're someone who doesn't have any idea, then starting with Luminar's templates and just clicking a few is a really great place to start. But for example, as I work my way through these, nothing is really quite ticking the box for me. So if I look at a before and after of this one, it certainly enhanced the photo in terms of bringing out a whole lot of detail, but that's not really the look that I've got in mind. So let me reset by coming down here to these three dots and just clicking reset adjustments. And I'll tell you what I'm thinking. First of all, this photo is underexposed. So I certainly want to brighten up the image. It's also quite undersaturated. But for this particular image, I'm actually thinking of keeping the saturation quite muted but playing off of this fact that it's bluer in the top third of the image and more of a browny tone through the bottom image. So I might play off of the fact that blue and orange are complementary colors and just try and enhance that so we have a third and two thirds split of complementary colors. I deliberately framed the meandering stream coming back from the mountains here so that it goes off to the bottom corner but I feel that there's a lot of detail and interest to be found within this photo, but at the moment it's just a little bit lost. So I want to bring out a little bit more interest around here, but I don't necessarily want to introduce the level of texture and clarity that we saw in that previous template that I applied. So as you would have seen from some of my previous videos, the way to do that in Luminar AI is with the localized adjustments. So that's how we'll fix that. But first things first, let's jump straight into the edit module, come into the essential section, and I'm gonna start building my edit from here. Now while we consider the composition and the crop, this is actually a bit of a strange one because the lie of the horizon itself, this was actually dead straight on my tripod, uh, but because of the fact that we've got this line coming down here, we've also got a receding line which goes up slightly here. and We don't have a pure clean horizon line as if we were looking out to the ocean, for example. It's actually pretty hard to tell whether this is straight or not. So I might just come into the composition section and just give this a little twist and see whether I prefer going this way or this way. And I might give it a slight rotation that way. To apply a crop, we just close this down. So the next thing I might look at is whether or not I need to erase anything from my photo. So if I see anything that catches my eye, like for example, this little puff of cloud just here, uh, this little bit right there, maybe even this area just here, I am going to look at deleting those. This road that runs here as well, I can't decide whether I like it or not. On one hand, I really like it because it gives a sense of scale. Knowing that cars go along this, you really get a feeling for the, the grandeur of these mountains in the background. But I don't like the way it kind of comes in and goes out in a kind of C shape, uh, whereas the river comes from the bottom corner and leads us into the photo. This doesn't really do much for us. So with that being said, yeah, I think I'm gonna just remove this as well. So I'm just gonna paint over the road I'm not doing a great job of this. I'm doing this with my mouse rather than a, a tablet. And let's just press erase and see what job Luminar does for us. And while that calculates, that's an ideal time for me to have another sip of coffee. And for an automated erase, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So let's move on. I'll jump into the light section. And I think it's always a good idea just to grab the temperature slider and just have a little play around and see what you like with that. But where we were sat before was pretty good because I want to keep the blue in the sky and the sort of orangey tones in the foreground as I alluded to. But I certainly want to bring the exposure up slightly. Now, I'm going to keep my eye more on the foreground and make sure this looks good. And I'm going to forget a little bit about the sky because I know that I can correct any overexposure or loss of detail in the clouds using that local masking that I talked about earlier. So if I introduce a bit of smart contrast, I wanna see what that looks like. And I feel like maybe if we even go in a negative direction with that, 
that's just actually bringing out a little bit more detail through everything. It's getting washed out, but that could, could be okay. We might be able to salvage that possibly by pushing the whites up and bringing the black point down. That's not bad. Let's have a look at our before and our after. Okay, so I feel like everything's subtle at the moment, but we've moved in a nice direction. We've certainly improved things from if we look at an underexposed image with a few items that we didn't want in the scene and also a lack of detail. And now we've got a little bit more detail in the scene, our exposure is looking better and we're good to move on. By using the smart contrast in a negative way, we may just have lost a little bit of contrast in this. So we could actually use the curves to actually introduce back a little bit of contrast by just putting an S shape into this. Now I don't want to be too heavy handed with this. I'm trying to keep everything pretty subtle in this edit. And again, I'll just do a quick check of before and after. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's jump into Enhance AI and often I'll actually start with Accent AI before I've done any of those other changes just to see if I push that all the way to 100 how much detail can be brought out in the file itself. So I may not want to use this as a tool to do that but it shows me is the detail there in the photo file in the first place. And you can see by pushing that to 100 if I turn it off and on we get a lot more detail through here with these trees, the little shrubbery, and there's more detail to be had in the mountains in the background as well. So I might use a little bit of that, not too much. Let's keep it around 30. Let's have a look what we can do if we crank structure all the way up. Now this is really heavy handed and overdoing it, but I do like to push my sliders all the way just so that you can see exactly what you're doing. Could you imagine if that's reset at zero, and you just start playing around with numbers around three and four. It's really hard to actually see what effect you're actually applying to the photo. So I really encourage you, push it all the way to 100, push it all the way to minus 100, and you really start to get a sense for what that slider is actually doing. And from there, you can say, yeah, I know what it's doing. I only want a little bit of that. I'll push that to number 10. So I mentioned earlier I want to create a kind of blue-orange colour harmony. At the moment we've got a blue, browny yellow. So let's see if we can do something about that. I'm going to boost my saturation up just to the point that it's really garish, but just so that I can actually see exactly what my hue shifts are doing. So now if I get my orange and take it away from the yellow and push it more towards the reds, I can get a sense of, okay, we can introduce orange into this, this zone in the foreground. The greens that we've got going on down here in this shrubbery, it might just be a little bit distracting because it's actually out of our color palette that we're trying to work with, the orange and blue. So I might try and push those away from green and more towards oranges. And I'm going to do the same with the yellows as well. I'll grab the blue slider and just have a play with that. So we can take it to the right, more towards purples. But in this case, I want to push it more towards the left so we're getting a nice cyan kind of blue effect. And I'm not panicking at all. The fact that this looks really garish because I'm going to double click the saturation slider. And now that's back to zero. We've got the effect of pushing those colors where we want them, but without that over the top saturation. So let's turn that off and on. And as a comparison, when we go back to the original, now this yellowy area kind of looks a bit sickly and muted so I quite like that introduction of the oranges. What we can do as well is if we jump into the luminance this controls how bright or dark colors are so I'm just wondering if we get the blue slider and push that to the right. I was hoping I can recover a little bit more detail in the sky there but it's making the mountains go too dark as well so I think maybe we'll just bring it down just a little bit but I don't want to take that too far. Okay, let's have a look at jumping into the details section. Let's have a look at bringing out some small details. Now, if I push that to 100, I really don't like the effect that this does. It's just a little bit too much. It's like using unsharp mask in Photoshop, but way too much with too big a radius. So while a little bit can be okay, I find pushing it too far, it gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. But let's push all of these and just, just see how it looks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about introducing too much of this. Let's bring these all down and just look at comparative before and after. It's really subtle, but it is just adding a little bit more pop to the actual landscape itself. Now we've got a whole heap of detail in through these kind of areas here. So I'm going to bring my sharpening up to 100 and see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit too much through the water here. But on the actual foliage itself, if 
if I double click to reset that, I actually don't mind going quite heavy with this. So let's kind of go somewhere around 70. And as I zoom in here, I'm pretty happy with the sharpness through here in the foreground. And now let's look at the mountains in the background. And Luminar now just renders those for us. Let's turn this effect off and turn it on. Now I'm liking the detail through here, but we are introducing a little bit of haloing just around the edge of the mountain here. To control that a little bit, we could increase the sharpening masking. And that's just taken that halo off enough to the point that I'm happy with that. And we click and zoom out. And now I'm seeing the image again. I'm thinking that the color may still be just a little bit oversaturated. Now we've done those color changes. I'm, I'm actually after quite a muted look to this. So let's pull the saturation down, take it all the way away, start bringing it in. And sometimes just that waving back and forth, keeping your eye on the picture can help you come up with that exact point where you're happy. So I'll let go there. And I have no idea as I let go of that slider that that number is minus 13. I was purely keeping my eye on the photo itself and seeing where it felt right to me and then letting go. And the fact that that says minus 13, that's irrelevant to me. I don't care what that number is. I just want it to look the way I want it to look. So let's turn that off and on. And that little bit of color toning in this photo I feel has gone a long way. Now, before I move into the creative section, there's one more thing I want to look at, and that's vignetting. So I'm going to push that to minus 100. And the reason I want to put a vignette on this is just so that we draw our viewer's attention to this center part here. I want this bright part here to really catch our eye and lead us into this area of the mountains. So obviously minus 100 is far, far too strong, but I do actually like to put it at its strongest just while I dive into the advanced settings. And then when I'm moving these sliders around, I can actually get a real feel for exactly how that vignette's going to behave. So for example, the feathering, I can see exactly how that softness of the feathering is working. If I was trying to move those sliders and keeping that amount at say minus 20, and now I move the feathering, you can barely see what it's doing. So I certainly recommend push that all the way. And when you're happy with the look of the vignette, then you can ease the amount back to where you want it. So I'm going to choose my subject and I'm going to click somewhere just off center to the left hand side here. And now I'm going to get that amount slider and just ease it off. And again, I'm just going to do that wavy back and forth dance with the slider until I find a place that I'm happy with. And then I can turn that off and on. And it's very, very subtle. I might go a little bit further, a bit heavier off and on. Cool. Now I'm finding that the plane here is still just a little bit bright and I can darken that down with the vignette. But the problem with doing that is then this side on the right hand side, which is already a bit darker, gets too dark. So I'm going to deal to this plane and darken that down slightly using one of our local masks. But for now, we want to get the overall photo looking the way we want it to. I'm not going to change the sky at all. I'm happy with it how it is. I'm not going to add anything into the sky. Um, something you could do if you wanted to would be perhaps to add some clouds in just if you wanted to add a little more interest into this background. I mean, that's that's kind of cool because it helps to bring our eye to the center point here. So if I turn that off and on, that's just one more visual anchor to bring our eye into the center of the frame. And this is the thing I really love about Luminar AI. It's so easy to play around with things, get creative. Um, doing something in Photoshop takes a lot longer. So the fact that I've added this cloud that I said, I'm not going to add anything into the sky. All of a sudden I've decided, do you know what? I think I quite like it. I'm going to leave it in. But I wouldn't have even gone down that route in Photoshop. I wouldn't have even bothered finding a cloud, masking it out, putting it on a layer, dealing with the transparency to blend it in. I wouldn't have done any of that and I wouldn't have come across this serendipitous stroke of luck. So just to finesse things, I'm going to go to place object and just move this to the left slightly and move on from there. You'll notice that as things recede into the distance, there's a little bit of haze going on. Now what we could do is use Luminar's Atmosphere AI to potentially increase the amount of haze that we have in the background. So the fog is not what we want. Let me come down to layered fog. 
sometimes it's a case of just having a little play around with these I push the depth all the way up as well so just while you're new to the program it's worth pushing these all the way to 100 and as you go through mist haze and fog it's easier to understand exactly what the different types of atmosphere are doing so I'm going to add haze and as you can see it lays right over the center point of the image at the moment and that's not where I want it so I'm going to use the depth slider to recede the haze and what I want to do my goal with playing with this is to create a more gradual transition from the background here to the foreground because if I take it away as the photo was shot the haze is quite abrupt at stopping around this kind of area here so I'm just going to use this depth slider to start to bring it in to bridge the gap between the foreground and the background and now with the amount slider I can play around with that just so that I can put it where I feel that that's a nice subtle addition to the photo let's turn it off and turn it on so the fact that I'm enhancing the haze that was already there I don't feel like I'm cheating the viewer by doing that and one of the things I'm trying to do with my landscape photography is actually capture the environment but then present it in an artistic way that makes the viewer feel a certain way now I don't want to lie to them in terms of changing the scenery but in terms of adding a cloud it's quite plausible that at some point a cloud was going to drift across and be right here and it's quite plausible that five minutes before or after this photo was taken the haze may have been leaking out this far into the environment so if I think that these additions in post-production help me to achieve what I want the photo to look like I am going to do it and I'm not going to lose sleep over it because we've introduced quite a lot of local contrast into this image sometimes what helps with that is coming into something like the mystical tool and if we push that to 100 you can see that it just softens everything off so if you introduce a lot of clarity what you can do is then introduce a bit of mystical or one of the glow filters and that can just help to just ease off the effect slightly I'm not really digging on the soft focus but maybe autumn effect soft if we push that to 100 yeah we might want to add just a little bit of that just to help soften things off again so without it and with it and one thing I recommend doing is often coming up to the eyedropper and just seeing your before and after and see where you've come from where you've gone to and just always question yourself have I gone a little bit too far and if you have you can always just ease things off just a little bit and as you guys will know one of the really really great things with Luminar is if you create an edit and you think that it's just a little bit too strong and you've got to the end and you're not sure which tool it is that's been a little heavy handed you just come down to this slider here in the bottom corner and you can ease off the effect from zero all the way to a hundred or somewhere in between but I'm going to push forward with this being at 100% for now as I was saying before color is going to play a massive part in this photo so let's come into the mood section and choose a LUT that's going to enhance that blue orange feel that we've created so as I push through these options here in the cinematic toning I'm just looking for something that looks nice in terms of that golden blue kind of look so Santa Barbara is quite a nice option and I think Anaheim was quite a nice option as well Anaheim is introducing some yellows into the highlight so if I click that and I'll just say why I like that where I was originally thinking about keeping a blue and orange split because that's bringing yellows into the highlights that's helping to create a cohesive color tone throughout the whole image by bringing yellows and oranges up into the sky the other one that I quite liked was Santa Barbara and that is keeping a more neutral blue and orange and I might just flick between the two of those one more time just to kind of really be sure I'm happy with my decision yeah I'm gonna go with Santa Barbara let's push that to a hundred zero and now just ease it into a point where we're happy and I often find that that marker of 30 that it defaults to is actually a really good setting for using these it's not too strong it's not too weak the Goldilocks principle it's just right so for our finishing touches let's do some local masking first of all let's deal to the sky I know that I wanted to bring the exposure down slightly and you can see that as I'm bringing the exposure down the color saturation is going up so I want to desaturate that just so that we get not getting oversaturated in the sky I may even want to push the color toning towards the blue slightly as well we could bring down the highlights slightly and see if that just helps protect some of the detail in the clouds perhaps even bring up the structure 
and again I feel like we might just be a little bit too saturated in the sky so this time I'm just going to bring the vibrance down and see how that affects it. Let's go for somewhere around there for now and now let's create the mask. We're going to use a gradient mask and bring that in from top to bottom and now we've darkened the sky using this gradient mask here. So let's add another one because we're going to darken down this area here. So first things first, I'm actually going to paint the mask in where I want it. I'm using a 50% opacity and that's just allowing me to build up the effect and it's going to be a little bit stronger at the foreground and fades away to the background. So obviously that's not making any changes at the moment, but now if I get the exposure slider and start taking that down, you can see that that's talking into that left hand plane. I might drop the highlights down slightly. And again, we're quite saturated, particularly in this area here. So I may just drop that saturation a little bit. And I want to increase the contrast coming through here. So the viewer's eye goes more to this stream through here. So I'm just going to add one more basic mask. I'm going to do the painting first. So that any adjustments we make, we know what that's going to look like in the right area rather than it being applied to the whole image. So for example, if I push the exposure all the way up, we can see exactly where that's affecting. And I may even, just while that's on like that, just erase a little bit of this effect, particularly from around here. To reset any of your sliders, just double click on that bullet point in the middle and that will send it back. And straight away when it jumped back, you could see that that was far too dark in that center point there. So let's have a look at playing with the contrast and see what that does. Maybe introduce a little bit of that. But I certainly want to make sure we can still see details down in that gully. So let's get the shadows and boost those up. Structure is certainly going to help. You can see that if I push this to 100, things start to get pretty ugly through there. So what I want to do is leverage that but in a more subtle way, perhaps something like that. Let's have a look, let's turn it off and turn it on again. And I actually feel like we are introducing too much detail. So I might actually just turn that structure a bit down a bit, maybe reduce the shadows. I think just by brightening that area up, that's doing enough. The viewer's eye will go to certain areas of an image first. They're often the brightest parts, the areas with the most contrast, also the most saturated areas. So I've desaturated this edge here and the sky. I'm thinking that I may actually increase the saturation in this center part just to help say, hey, this is an important part of the image. Look here, look here. I could say that now I'm done with this, but what I want to do is actually jump back to that original adjustment we made for the sky. And I'm just going to reduce the amount because I think it's just a little bit heavy handed. I think that's better. Let's have a look at our before and our after. And we really have come a long way with this. If I'm being quite particular with my photos like I am with this one, I'll often jump back to the beginning. And now we've got so many effects compounded one on top of the other. And it's just an opportunity to reassess whether or not you want to keep certain effects at their full intensity. And in this case, I'm just going to drop that Accent AI down a little bit. It's a very powerful tool. And as I said before, as you start to compound different effects one on top of the other, the ones that went before can start to take on a different look. So all of a sudden I feel like now we are oversaturated. So I've pulled that down a little bit. Let's look at our before and our after. And to finish things off, I'm just going to change the crop on this ever so slightly because I feel like we are wonky and going the wrong way slightly and it's kind of bugging me. I also feel like we're a little bit too dominant on the right hand side and I want our viewer definitely to stay with this as the center of the frame. And as I reframe it, you can see that now the stream is much more in the center of the frame. And I'm happier with that and I'm going to export it. I'm going to save photo to disk. I'm going to select JPEG, keep it as its actual size. I'm going to change the color space to a more user friendly sRGB and I'm going to push the quality up to 86. That would do. And there we go.
I've got a sneaky feeling I may have overbaked this one, but the cool thing is you've got that slider so that you can reduce the effect that you've created. And that comes in really handy because the tools inside Luminar AI are really powerful. So it's really easy when you're adding one on top of the other on top of the other to compound effects and just make something that's just too much, just visually, whoa. So that slider to bring the effect back down is really, really useful. Before you disappear, leave me a comment below and just let me know, what do you think to this edit? Would you have included the cloud or left that out? Would you have gone for that orange blue combination? What would you have done? I would love to know your thoughts. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.